Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to give you a beginner's guide to using Pixlr photo editing online. So let's open up our web browser and we'll go to Pixabay first and we'll find a picture. So let's do something like a sunset. So we can download a free image of some sort of sunset, maybe something like this for now. We'll play around with this image. Let's click on it and we'll download the image. In fact, we'll download it. We have to log in for the high res. So let's just download this version here, we'll be fine. Okay, we'll download that image. I'm just gonna drag and drop it into this directory. So we've got the picture in here now. We're going to go to another website called pixlr.com and there's two options here. Now there is an option where if you click on this open pixel editor it's going to ask you to install flash we need flash that's pretty old school so we're going to click on this try pixel x we'll click on there and you get option to select some pictures here. You can pick on any of these pictures, but you can upload. So let's upload, open a photo and we'll open up this tree. And here we can see that in the, the editor here. So you can do basic stuff in here. It's not like advanced photo editing, like GIMP or anything like that. But if you're just having a little bit of fun, you want to do something for Facebook, just upload something simple, um, just do some basic edits. Then you can use this software. All this, all this does down here is just change uh, how the image is being displayed so I wouldn't worry about that too much normally I just leave it on fit here and there's a few different options here so we'll look at cropping afterwards let's click on um, this option here adjust so here you can adjust like uh, the brightness and the contrast you can really play around with the images increase the saturation or decrease it you can have a little play around here change the temperature make it cold or make it you know bright and warm change the tints you can do a lot of stuff in here. You can see that's just like the first set of settings. Um, you can darken it down as well like this. You can really play around with this. You've got details. You can increase the sharpening or decrease it. That really affects the image quite a lot. So you have to be a bit careful with that option. You can change the blur. If you want to blur it out, you can blur it out. You can stack images in here as well. So you can have more than one image. Maybe we'll give that a go in a minute. Um, so we'll leave this pretty much like this. You can play around with these settings, just you know, experiment with them. You can do all sorts of stuff in here. You just gotta play around with it and see what works for you. So these are just like color grading and settings like this you can think, basic settings. So there is a, there is a curve setting here as well. And you can, when you select the, the specific color, you need to double click inside here and then you can change the curves and change the settings here as well can get rid of pretty much all of the orange and just leave it blue you can bring back that color so you can really play around with it if you don't like what you've done here just double click here double click uh, on the dot and then that will get rid of that setting so we'll click ok here we'll go to this next one and this is effects so you can do these standard effects you could say you can click on dreamy you can change the settings and then you can change the amount of that the way that that setting affects the image as well you can play around with these. There's loads of different options. If you don't like these ones, you can click back, click on something else like uh, retro, for example, and you can play around with these settings as well. Maybe we'll use something like, uh, let's use this one here. This one's okay. So we'll play around with that. We'll use that one for now. We'll click okay. So you can see we've changed the image quite a bit. This is the original one. And then we'll change the settings. You've got to play around with it and make it what you want it to be. We can click on text here, we can add new text. So let's say if I add something like, uh, let's just put my domain name in here. So we'll put in dcpweb.co.uk. You can click on the text and drag it around. If you drag it off center, when you move the cursor towards the center, it will lock again. And you can move it along the center axis, you can say, or the center point to get it in the middle. Then you can click here and you can change the font type so you might just use something simple like Verdana and you can change the size as well. 
So it's quite, you know, interesting software. If you're doing something for Facebook, a little Facebook page, you could, this could have been a photo in the background of yourself. You can put some text overlaid on it. You can uh, change the angle of the text as well. If you let go of the mouse, then you can click undo to reset it to this previous point. Uh, line spacing is not really relevant, but if, if you, well, in this example, but if I hit the enter key and type in, uh, let's say, let's go back here. We'll click here and we'll type in web designers then you should be able to change how much space is in between those two words or the, yeah, the two rows of information we'll get rid of this web designers we don't really need that there's no carriage return in here so um, you just type the text in and it will push it out on the page here you can change the color of the font, nice and simple. We'll leave it white for now. So I've kind of set up this image. So I want to just have a little play around here. Um, we can add more images here, so drag and drop, right? So if we did something like, let's go back to Pixabay. If we go to Vector, in theory, let's look for something like, I don't know. Um, look for a bird. Let's say this one here, so we'll click on it. You can see it's a transparent background, so let's test this out. I haven't tested this out before. So we download this picture. Annoying captures. So let's download that. We'll drag and drop it into this folder as well, the same folder with the image. We'll go back here, and we should be able to click on this. We'll drag and drop it, it says. Now you can see those birds, can you see them? They're overlaid here now. We've got two copies, so we should be able to delete one. You can see the layers here now, right? So we can add other images or other content and overlay it. So we could have these birds flying over here somewhere. Uh, we should be able to... I'm not, I'm not finding this sort of opacity on here, so maybe someone can tell me if they've used this a lot more. But normally it's like an um, sort of an opacity where we can change. Doesn't seem to be doing much to this particular picture. It would be nice if I could have faded the birds, but we'll have to play around with this again maybe one other day and see what we can do. So we're just having a little bit of fun here. Maybe I'll put those those birds down here, like here. That would be good. Okay. So you can stack images and you see your layers here. Right here. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was this crop and rotate. So when you click on crop and rotate, you can just set it to all of these different settings, these default settings. But the one that interests me are these like this Facebook advert, the Facebook cover, so your Facebook cover. Once you select a part of the image, you can drag it and select specific parts. So whatever's highlighted in this box here will be your face exactly the right size for your Facebook cover. Let's you've got a LinkedIn one here, which is quite narrow. Um but let's have a look at the Twitter one. So this is the Twitter size. Maybe what we'll do is click on um, back on this text tool. And now you can see it's set to the Twitter size, so the Twitter dimensions. And you can maybe just drag, I could maybe put the text at the bottom. Maybe we leave the text here somewhere like this. Something like that. And then we can go to save. And then we want to save it as a PNG file. And at that size, which is the Twitter size, we'll click save. Now we've got this PNG file. And we can drag and drop that into here. We can see that now. So let's try and add that to my Twitter page, just as an example. So we're done with this software now. We'll go over to my website or my Twitter page. We'll click on edit profile, change header image, upload an image. We'll select that one. Click open, and then we can see that picture in here now. And we click apply. And 
can see it in the header image has been updated. I can click save changes. Now we've got that DCP web. It's not the clearest picture in GIMP or some other software. We could have done a better job to be honest, but Twitter doesn't really like sort of text-based content. It's, it does compress the image quite a lot to be honest. So, um, but it's looking okay. It works and it's, you know, we did that pretty quick. For some reason, my bird has been chopped in half here. Can you see that? The end part of the bird is missing for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but have a little play around with that software. I've just been using it just to do some stuff on Facebook, just playing around with it, um, rather than using GIMP. So if I'm not in front of my main computer, I can use this software rather than GIMP um, to do this photo editing. It's called pixel.com, right? Let's just double check that. P-I-X-L-R.com. Yeah, pixel.com. Let's go to that website. I'll put a link to this website in the YouTube description so you can easily access it as well. You just make a copy of that. Okay. So that's the end of this tutorial. Just showing you a little editing using that particular online editing tool, image editing tool. And I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.